Hello my fellow YouTubers, this is your boy, your man, your YouTuber, Jack McCarthy! And today I'm going to react to the latest Mr. Nightmare video. This is three true Uber slash Lyft horror stories. I mean, I know there was one before that, but you know. In the opening title says, this video contains two news stories and one story that has been used already in a video that was removed. Oh, okay, maybe I'll remember if I do see it. Before I begin with this video, make sure you click that subscribe button and the little bell so you never, ever, 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 ever miss out any updates or other videos such as this. And don't forget to check out Mr. Nightmare and Mare, Air and all his other videos because they are legendary and awesome. Alright, and remember, always stay tuned for more of my videos and don't forget to check out my previous two that I uploaded. All right, without further ado, let the reaction to three true Uber slash Lyft horror stories begin. Here we go. Anonymous. No, I didn't feel the healer heartbeat. Ah, damn it. This was four years ago when I was oh. an 18 year old college student. And where I'm from, May is finals month. I huh. spent yet another late night in the campus library until closing time, which in May is 11 p.m. instead of 10 p.m. since everyone's up late studying. I had to call an Uber to my off-campus apartment since I had arrived with a friend who left hours before me and I didn't have my car with me. I was out in the library parking lot at 11.15 when the Uber pulled up. It was a gray Toyota Camry. The driver's name was Adam. He greeted me as normal and I sat in the back seat diagonal from him. So far, so good. in his mid-40s. For the first five minutes of the ride, there were no words exchanged between the two of us. But then he started to ask me questions. His first question was if I was a student, which seemed a rather pointless question since I was just picked up from a college library. Next, he asked how my classes are going, then how old I was. I didn't like that question. I lied and said I was 23 instead of 18. At this point, I noticed he would constantly look at me through the rearview mirror as he spoke. Man. He would finish what he was saying. He had this weird, creepy smirk on his face. His questions were getting a little too personal for someone whose sole relationship with me was supposed to be my driver for 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. He asked how my dating life at school is. Ugh. As much as I wanted to just flat out ignore his question, I said it wasn't bad. I should have lied and said I had a boyfriend, but for whatever reason, I didn't think of saying that. Ah. He transitioned from questions to making comments, like that he used to be a huge cheater in college and asked if I ever cheated. I nervously laughed and said once or twice. He then made it even weirder to no surprise and asked if I'd ever cheated on a boyfriend. I said no. At this point, we were stopped at a red light. I tried my best to avoid looking at the rearview mirror, but I was too curious and snuck a peek. He was looking at me. He made a comment that I was very pretty. I knew it was coming eventually, and it still was incredibly creepy. Mm -hmm. I didn't acknowledge it. I think I remember there were this. two minutes left in the ride, when I noticed he made a left turn instead of a right turn at one of the intersections. Huh. So I spoke up and told him he went the wrong way. Then he said he knows. He just has to stop at his place real quick to get something. I asked him to please just drop me off first, but he insisted his house was a minute away. And apparently it was. He stopped in front of a house and said, we're here. And he turned to me and asked if I wanted to come in, <gasps> saying he had alcohol and food in case I wanted to release some stress mm -mm. after studying. Bad idea. Red noticed. flags. I wanted to get out of the car and run, but I was scared to. I said, please just take me home. He chuckled and said he'd be right back. He went into his house. And that was when I got out from the car and started to run. Good call. No, I didn't think he had plans to murder me, but something was off about him and the situation, and I just wanted to get out of there. Made the right call to run. Moments later, I felt my phone vibrate. It was a message from Adam, the driver, saying, you know why I have your address, hot stuff? That just made me run even Oh, faster. shit. I canceled the ride just so he wouldn't be able to contact me anymore. This is why people are scared of Uber. In a few minutes. Running with my backpack was hard, but thank God I do my cardio. My apartment was the left side of a duplex. That Adam guy wasn't parked in front of my house by the time I got back, so I hoped maybe he just wouldn't come. I filled out a form on Uber.com titled, Report a Serious Incident with a Driver. I just gave all the details of the trip and included a screenshot of his message threatening that he had my address. Good call. Uber contacted me the next day, stating the driver was removed from the platform and should there be any further contact, that I should contact the authorities. Well, the next night when my roommate wasn't home because she was spending the night with the guy she was talking to, uh -huh. there was a knock at the front door <gasps> followed by the doorbell. 
was like 8 to 9 p.m., so it was kind of late for solicitors or anything like that. I called through the door, who is it? A man's voice on the other side said, I found something that belongs to you. I asked, who is this, and what did you find? Their response was, just open up, I'll show you. The voice was familiar. Uh-huh, it's Adam. I looked through the window next to the door, and I saw Adam, the Uber driver, hiding to the side of the door, like he was pressed flat up against the wall, and he was holding something, I couldn't tell what. I ran for my phone to call 911, and sparing them all the details, I just begged for police to get to my apartment immediately. But by the time police arrived in front of the duplex, the knocks had long since stopped. He was gone, at least off the front porch. No way. I imagine he saw the police cars in front of the house, because he never returned after that. Yeah. There was this whole following up with the Uber report and the police now. But since there was no proof that it was Adam at the front door, I couldn't even press charges. The semester was over anyway. The lease was up, and I moved back home for summer. I left no trace for that Adam guy to ever find me again. At least, I don't think I did. Eh, we'll hope for the best. That's all I can say. Another anonymous story. Alright, let's see what number two is. This story still haunts me to this day. Almost every day. Okay. I used to be an Uber driver as my second job, usually late at night, like bar closing hours. Uh-huh. It was a Saturday night around 3 a.m. I was a couple hours into my Uber driving night, and I got a call from across town to pick someone up on a street corner. In came some guy, African-American, mid-twenties, he had dreadlocks, I noticed a small tattoo on his neck, but I didn't look much longer than that. I asked how his night's going, and he just grunted. Happens, not everyone's super friendly. I confirmed the address he gave me, which appeared to be a house, and he just said yeah. About a minute into the drive, he got a little aggressive and concerned that I apparently made a wrong turn because he thought I was taking a longer route. I assured him that I was just following the route that the app was giving me, and he calmed down. Like 10 seconds later, he asked me if I'm feeling lucky, and I asked, what do you mean? He follows that with, I mean, how much do you value your life, son? Nobody really values what they got. Oh no, I red like flags. Was going. I responded that I appreciate my life and kids every single day. He went silent after that for a while. Then he started saying some things at such a low volume that I didn't know if he was talking to me or not. So I asked, what was that? And he replied, nothing fool, just get me to where I gotta be. I asked, where is it we're heading anyway? He replied, I just gotta take care of some unfinished business. I really, really didn't know what to make of that answer. Yeah. I wasn't looking to continue that conversation or dig any deeper than I had already dug. We pulled up to some corner in a rather poverty-stricken area. Not an area I typically did any drop-offs or pickups. The guy said, I can you wait here for me? I froze for a second, confused. I asked, do you need a ride back somewhere? He replied, yeah, this will be quick. I just got to take care of some unfinished business first. I didn't want to drive this guy anywhere else, and I had a feeling whatever he was about to do in this house wasn't good, based on his unfinished business comment. I didn't want to be the getaway driver after some kind of fight or altercation, so I said, yeah, I'll be waiting here. But I had no intentions of waiting. Good call. The ride was marked as complete on my end anyway. He shut the car door and approached the house, but he wasn't approaching the front door. He went to the back of the house by the backyard. I didn't stick around after that. I drove off after about 20 seconds, slowly and quietly so he wouldn't hear me taking off. I chose to end my shift that night right then and there. Good I call. was pretty sketched out. The next day, I heard something on the news that changed a part of me forever. What? There were two people shot in their home in the town I dropped that guy off the night before. <gasps> As the news report went on, they showed a picture of the suspected shooter. <gasps> it was the guy I dropped off at that house. He was apprehended fleeing the scene not too far away after neighbors reported hearing gunshots. The shooting was suspected to be gang related. I have forever blamed myself for this partially. Having been the one to drive someone with intentions of murdering people to his destination to commit his heinous acts. Yeah, I know. People it's shocking. Told me if it wasn't me, it would have been another Uber driver. Yeah, but I still besides. can't help but feel partially to blame for this it, it, and not picking hey. up the red flags in that car. Yeah. Ride. It was a little bit off, but hey, don't blame yourself, man. You didn't know. You didn't know. You didn't see it coming. That's not on you. You didn't know. Shh, She was thunderstorm of the year. This was after my night shift ended at 4 a.m. I had to call a lift to the train station since I didn't have my car at the time. I waited outside the place I bartended at at the time, under the front patio to avoid getting soaked. A car pulled down the empty street and stopped in front of the bar. I had to check the Lyft app to ensure it was the correct car, and it was. Good. Ray Honda Civic. I got in and greeted the driver, whose name was Sahil. 
I attempted to get in the front seat at first, but he told me not to and to sit in the back. That was only the second time I ever tried sitting in the front. That was before I realized it was customary to sit in the back seat. From the bar to the train station, it was about 10 minutes. The reason I was taking the train instead of just Ubering the whole way to my house is because I'd be saving about 40 bucks. The driver was going very slow. But there was nothing weird about that, given the weather outside. Eh, I would expect good call. anyone to drive cautiously in a torrential downpour like this one. The driver didn't take the highway route. He took us down the side roads. I wasn't concerned about missing my train, though. I had plenty of time. I wasn't concerned until the driver said something under his breath and then pulled the car to the side of the road. I looked up from my phone to see why. I saw a man in the pouring rain waving his hands in the air. Huh? I almost asked if he was stopping to pick him up, but I just observed. Yes, the man on the street got in the back passenger seat next to me. He was soaking wet. He kept his black hood on in the car. I scooted all the way over to the left. I was expecting the man and the driver to exchange some kind of words, but they didn't. Did they know each other? I had no idea what was going on. During the ride, I felt in the corner of my eyes the feeling of that man next to me looking at me. Maybe he was looking out my window, so I shot a quick half-second glance to him. I was wrong. He was looking at me. On top of it, as the drive progressed, I started paying more attention to the route we were taking. It wasn't the right way to the train station. Oh no. I tried to sneak a peek at the driver's phone screen to see if maybe he was following some incorrect route. But he seemed to have his phone on his lap, unlike most Lyft drivers who have their phones mounted on the dashboard. I politely said, I think we're going the wrong way. He replied something in such a low tone mixed with a thick accent that I had a hard time understanding it. By the third time I asked him to repeat himself, I finally just repeated myself and said we're going the wrong way. I confirmed this by checking the map on my phone. The driver didn't acknowledge me. I felt as though the guy next to me was inching closer every minute. Oh he no. He also wouldn't stop staring at me. Eventually I asked the driver to pull over and cancel the ride. No acknowledgement. The driver was blowing stop signs, and there were no stoplights anywhere on these side roads. Shit. So I didn't really have a good time to escape, but I knew I was about to be their victim of something. Yeah. This was some kind of trap, so I decided I was going to jump out of the car when I had the chance. I waited till we were on a street with woods on one side, which was perfect for me to make my escape. The car was going probably 15 to 20 miles per hour. I opened the car and jumped out. The two men screamed stuff in a different language guessing to each other. My impact with the ground was obviously painful, but I think the layer of water on the street might have cushioned my fall a little bit. Maybe. The car completely stopped, and I saw the man who was next to me get out. I had to get on my feet and run into the woods. I heard him chasing after me for a little bit, but there was no shot he'd find me. I heard him yell something back to the car, and it sounded like it was in Russian. Then he ran back to the car, and they drove off. Good call. I immediately called an Uber instead of a Lyft this time. Good call. This time I was brought safely to the train station. While on the train, I went ahead and filed an online police report, and then contacted Lyft and reported the driver. The next day, I also went to the police station and reported the whole incident. But here's where the bomb was dropped. What? There was a gray Honda Civic reported stolen just the night before. I gave them every last detail I could remember, and eventually I was on my way. I left that police station contemplating my life and just how narrowly I may have escaped with my life. Yeah, I think you narrowly escaped with your life on that. Okay, so based on those three stories, the scariest one would have to be number three, the the attempted kidnapping and possibly murder. Murder. That's the. As for the second story, the dri dr the driving the shooter one. That um, it was pretty scary, but. The, the the scary between not uh, not too scary but still scary that has to go to the first scary story the girl that was probably being up that was probably being seduced or or s something by the 40 year old guy adam that's the scare that's the scary one and the least scary would have to go to the driving around a po a killer so so the attempted kidnapping so the story number three, the scariest. Story number one, one the second scariest, and story number two, the not so scariest. All right, yeah, that's where I pretty much ranked them. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Make click the rare, subscribe, like, click the little bell. Never ever 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 miss out on any updates. Take a look at my previous.
sorry about that, videos and a whole bunch of others coming up in the future. John McCarthy, signing off. El bio -y.